Okay, here's another important topic, expressions involving square roots. You need to be able to simplify mathematical expressions that involve square roots. And we'll start with some simple examples. Look at this, the square root of x squared. Okay, you know what that is. The square root of x squared is x because the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So write your answer down here, x. The square root of x squared is x. Now keep that in mind. And look at this next example, the square root of x to the power of 8. Hmm. Well, let's rewrite x to the 8th so that it's written as something squared. Watch this. x to the 8th can be written as x to the 4th squared. Remember the rules of exponents right here. If you have one exponent raised to another, that's equivalent to those two exponents being multiplied together. So x to the fourth to the power of two is the same thing as x to the eight. So those two are mathematically equivalent. But writing it this way helps me take the square root of it because now this is written as the square root of something squared. And the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So the square root of this squared is just this. So the answer ends up being x to the fourth. Let's do another and you'll see a pattern here. The square root of x to the power of 20. Well again rewrite this as something squared and you should see that x to the 20 is the same thing as x to the 10 squared because again the rules of exponents apply. One exponent raised to another is the same as those two exponents multiplied together. So x to the 10 squared is the same as x to the 10 times 2 or x to the 20. So those those are equivalent expressions but written this way it's written as something squared and the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So the square root of this squared is just this. So my answer is x to the 10th. So write that there in your notes. Now take note here, this x could be written as x to the 1. That's the same thing. x is the same thing as x to the power of 1. So note what's going on here. The square root of x to the power of 2 gives me x to the power of 1. The square root of x to the power of 8 gives me x to the power of 4. And the square root of x to the power of 20 is x to the power of 10. In each case, this square root operation causes the exponent to be cut in half. The 2 exponent becomes a 1, the 8 exponent becomes a 4, the 20 exponent becomes a 10, and that will happen every single time. That's not just a coincidence. That works out every single time, and you can see why. It's because of the way these rules of exponents work. So whenever you have a power, something raised to a power, and you square root it, that power gets cut in half. Now you can also do this with odd exponents. Watch this. The square root of x to the fifth. Well watch this. I'm going to rewrite x to the fifth as x to the fourth times x. Because if I take two exponents, this, this x right here, remember, is the same thing as x to the one. You could put a little one right there if you wanted to. We typically don't. But it's the same thing as x to the one. And the rules of exponents say that two exponents like that multiply together. If they have the same base, they're both base x in this case, then those two exponents just get added. So the 4 and the 1 are equivalent to this single exponent of 5. So x to the 5th could be rewritten as x to the 4th times x to the 1. And we know that x to the 4th, following the same technique we were doing up here, this could be rewritten as the square root of x squared squared times x. And the square root of x squared squared, that comes out of the radical and just becomes an x squared instead of an x squared squared. And we end up with x squared out of the radical and then this x stays underneath. So the square root of x to the fifth is x squared times the square root of x. In other words, in here we found this perfect square factor. We square rooted it and brought it out of the radical and there it is. 
and this other factor that's not a perfect square remains. And this technique is pretty powerful. When we take a perfect square factor and bring it out from under the radical like this and square root it in the process, that technique works even if the factor isn't a simple variable. It could be an expression that's squared instead. I'll show you an example of that. Okay, right here, let's look at this. The square root of w times x plus y squared. So we have x plus y in parentheses there, squared. Well, this is something squared under the radical. And that's mathematically the same thing as this thing not squared outside of the radical. In other words, the square root of this squared is just this. So I can rewrite this with the x plus y outside of the radical. It's no longer squared and square rooted. Right in here it's squared and square rooted under the radical. And the squaring and the square rooting undo each other. So we're just left with the x plus y. This w though is still here and it's under the radical. So we need to include that. x plus y times the square root of w. And that's our answer. And you need the parentheses there too. Here are a couple more examples similar to that. Watch this. The, the square root of a minus b cubed. Hmm. Okay, let's think. We're looking for perfect square factors. And this is a cube right here. So what can we do? Well, we can rewrite this as a minus b squared times a minus b. I've simply taken this and factored it. And in the process, have found a factor here that is a perfect square. So this factor is going to come out from under the radical and get square rooted. So in other words, this square root of this thing squared is simply this thing. So I'll put that out front, out from under the radical, a minus b. And then I still have another factor of a minus b under the radical. And that's my answer. And that's considered simplified a minus b times the square root of a minus b. Okay, one more example here. This one will be a little bit harder. The square root of 8x squared times 2x plus 7 to the fifth. Okay, let's work through this. It's not going to be too bad. Let's just rewrite it one time. It's going to be large, but it should make a lot of sense to you. 8 is 4 times 2. So that's the 8. The x squared we'll leave there. And then this 2x plus 7 to the power of 5, I'm going to write it as 2x plus 7 to the power of 4 times 2x plus 7. So that's a long expression, but you should see that it's mathematically equivalent to the original. Again, the 8, whoops, the 8 here just became the 4 times 2. The x squared sticks around, doesn't change. And this 2x plus 7 to the 5th, I've just rewritten like this. 2x plus 7 to the 4th times 2x plus 7. Now, the perfect square factors can come out from under the radical. The 4 pops out and becomes a 2. The x squared is going to pop out and become an x. And this is going to pop out and become a 2x plus 7 to the power of 2 instead of this original power of 4 over here. So my answer is going to be 2, that's this 2 right here. So I have a 2 times an x, that's this x right here, 2x. And then I'm going to have a 2x plus 7 to the power of 2, and that came from this factor coming out from under the radical. And then remaining under the radical, I'm going to have this 2 and this 2x plus 7. So under the radical, I have 2 times 2x plus 7. And that's my answer. If you wanted to, you could distribute that 2 right there, but it's not necessary. That's the answer. 2x times 2x plus 7 squared times the square root of 2 times 2x plus 7.